Good morning, Girl Scouts. My name is Shasa. I am the training manager for Girl Scouts Heart of Central California. And I have been coming on to share stories um, from uh, different books and cultures. And today I'm in, gonna introduce you to a biography. So these are stories written um, to tell us about other people's lives. I um, first got into biographies when I was in elementary school and the librarian introduced me to um, a series of biographies on Americans who had changed the world. And today I'm gonna to share, this is just a short story of a woman named Ernestine Rose. And she lived in um, between the years 1810 and 1892. So a couple of centuries ago. And I am sharing this story uh, because at Girl Scouts, we really want to build girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. And I feel that this woman really demonstrated a lot of those values that we really um, are hoping girls learn through the Girl Scout program. And I wanted to share um, her story with you. And this story is uh, titled, She Argued with the King. Every day, Ernestine listened to her father say his prayers. Every day she heard him give thanks that he had not been born a woman. One day she had to ask, why? What is wrong with being a woman? Her father was angry that she dared to question a prayer that Jewish men had been saying for centuries. Nothing is wrong with being a woman, he said. It is simply better to be a man. Ernestine said, but that's not fair. Her father said, be quiet. Who are you to say what is fair or unfair? Who was she indeed? She was Ernestine Potowski, the young daughter of a rabbi in a little town in Poland. But it seemed she was also a person who could not keep still when anything seemed wrong or unfair to her. She grew older and kept asking questions. Finally, after her mother died, her father decided that Ernestine needed a husband. One day he told Ernestine that he had arranged a marriage for her. Ernestine asked the man's name and then said, Father, I am sorry, but you must tell this man I cannot marry him. I do not love him. Her father said, I will do no such thing. The contract is signed already. The dowry is promised. And a dowry was uh, something that um, a long time ago was promised uh, to the family of a husband when a woman joined uh, and married with him. Ernestine said, I did not sign any contract. If you will not tell him that there will be no marriage, then I will. Ernestine went to the man's house and did so. He said, you are breaking the contract. And so I will still claim the dowry that your father promised me. Ernestine thought about this for a while. Then she decided to take the matter to law and speak to her own lawyer. For a young Jewish woman in Poland to do such a thing was unheard of. But Ernestine Potowski was so intelligent and made it so clear that it would be unfair for the man to keep her dowry that the court ruled in her favor. She could keep her dowry and did not have to marry a man she did not love. Before long, Ernestine left her father's house and went to live in Berlin in Germany. Soon she learned that there were rules against Polish Jews living there. Why should that be, she wondered. She went to the king himself to find out. The king was so surprised and impressed that he told this unusual young woman that she could stay in Germany as long as she wished. But restless Ernestine was soon traveling on to England. Here she met a group of people who were devoting their lives to speaking out against laws and customs that seemed unfair. Suddenly Ernestine realized that this was what she wanted to do with her life also. She fell in love with a man, William Rose, who thought just as she did. Soon they were married. Together, they decided that the United States might be the best place to speak out for the changes they were needed in the world, so they sailed for America. They were excited by New York City. It was so big and colorful and busy, but they soon saw the unhappiness and injustices there. They saw the rich taking advantage of the poor, the whites taking advantage of the blacks, and men treating women unfairly in many ways. It happened that just then a New York senator was trying to pass a bill in the legislature to provide that when women were married, they 
uh, could keep control of any money or property that they owned. Before then, when women were married, they had to give all of their property and ownership to their husband. So Ernestine Rose began her life in America going from door to door asking women to sign a paper saying that they were in favor of the bill. Ernestine was surprised that so few women were interested. She asked them if they liked having no more rights in the law than children or lunatics. Finally, because Ernestine and other workers also would not give up, the bill was passed, but it had taken years. By that time, Ernestine had begun to give lectures in public. This was something few women dared to do. When Ernestine came out on a platform, the men in the audience booed and jeered. But Ernestine waited until they were quiet and then began to talk. Sometimes she spoke about the unfair way women were treated. Sometimes she spoke about the unfairness of slavery, which was still legal at that time. Very few people wanted to hear such talk, but Ernestine was such a good speaker that they listened in spite of themselves. The years went by, and as Ernestine Rose traveled back and forth across the country giving her lectures, people gradually began to feel that women, well, some women anyway, could speak in public without disgrace. They also began thinking more seriously about some of the laws and customs in America that kept it from truly being the land of the free. Ernestine Rose spent 33 years traveling and speaking in the United States. Then she and her husband went back to England to live. But the daughter of a Polish rabbi, who could not help speaking out against anything that seemed unfair, had left a lasting mark on her adopted country. And this was a woman who faced fear and in a time where it really was unusual for women to speak out or to question what they were seeing. And that can take real courage to look at maybe something that you see as unfair and to question it and to work for change. At Girl Scouts, we really encourage girls to take the lead and step up when they see something that they are not um, in agreement with or they don't think is fair and to act to make, uh, to, to act to change the world to take action on things that they see as um, problems in their community that they would like to see changed. I am encouraged by reading biographies of women who did amazing things and took, um, took time to really look at the world around them and speak out against what was unfair. So I encourage you to look at the world around you and talk with your family and friends and to continue to ask questions because that's one of the first ways to really learn is to ask questions um, and listen to the people around you. If you haven't discovered Girl Scouts yet, I encourage you to check out girlscouts.org and find what's going on in Girl Scouts in your area. We're based here in Sacramento, Girl Scouts Heart of Central California and serve 18 counties here in Northern California. Um, if you're someone who's inspired and wants to take action and build on your courage, confidence, and character, we encourage you to check out Girl Scouts and the programs that we offer. Thank you and have a wonderful day.